at-home recording is becoming easier and easier. Everything from equipment to software to tutorials is becoming more and more accessible. And as this trend continues, the questions keep piling up. Specifically, how do I mic my acoustic guitar? Well, on today's show, we'll be looking at a buffet of options so that you can get the sound you want from the equipment that you already have. Hey, TAC family, this is episode 271 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show, a show packed full of inspiration and fun designed to help you get more progress, fulfillment, and joy from your acoustic guitar journey. Throughout today's episode, I'll deliver to you some good guitar news, including a clarification from the electric guitar world, a captivating singer-songwriter, and much, much more. Plus, we're going to head north of the border to check out a guitar song from Acoustic Tuesday viewer Jerry. But first, let's talk miking your acoustic guitar. Now, uh, two things before we get started. Number one, I am not an engineer. Okay, if you're looking for an engineer's perspective, an actual recording engineer's perspective, this is not the video for you. Plenty of those videos exist. Please find them if that's what you want. I just wanna be clear about that because I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of gain structure and XY patterns and things like that. That stuff is super valid. It's just not gonna be in today's episode. Number two, this could very easily have turned into a list of the 10 awesome, most awesomest microphones you can get for your acoustic guitar. That is not this video. I wanted to make a video that didn't have you running out and getting more gear. As much as I love getting gear, I didn't want you to have to do that. I want you to use what you have at home and get the sound that you want, the sound that you have in your head. And if you have a microphone, if you have a digital audio workstation, a DAW, that you record into your computer with, you can get the sound you want with whatever microphone you have. And you'll see how in today's episode. But first, I do want to share with you three of my favorite microphones because I do have some favorites. Now, these aren't wildly rare or wildly expensive microphones. These are kind of a, your run-of-the-mill microphones that produce really good acoustic guitar tone. So uh, I'm gonna play these back to back to back for you so you can actually hear them. But first, let me describe them. Uh, first up is the Shure SM57, a true road dog microphone. This is uh, as run of the mill as run of the mill gets. It is a, a, a dynamic microphone. It will require a little bit more gain because it's dynamic. I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about that, but that's just from my experience. And that's kind of the general rule with dynamic microphones. Uh, it gives a pretty accurate sound. Um, and I don't know what else to say about it. It's like, um, it's like paper towels. They're just always there. The Shure SM57 is always there. Paper towels was such a weird uh, parallel. Okay, that's the first mic you're gonna hear. The second mic you're gonna hear is an Octava MK012 um, or MC012. I think the difference is where they're actually manufactured. Nonetheless, this is a small diaphragm condenser microphone that's very detailed, it's articulate, it's clear. It will require phantom power. If you have a DAW, there's a little button that says 48V. Uh, just go ahead and push that if you're using this microphone and um, it'll power the microphone. Great, great microphone for fairly transparent acoustic guitar tone. And then lastly, the microphone I favor the most is the uh, Ear Trumpet Edwina. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Again, it will require phantom power. And to me, this has the clarity and detail that the Octava has, but it also has some body. And that's why I like it so much. It really captures the acoustic guitar, the essence of the acoustic guitar. So without further ado, what you're gonna hear right now is the same thing played, first through the SM57, then the Octava MK012, and then finally the ear trumpet Edwina.
So which one was your favorite? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Which one sounded the best? And on that note, is there a universal definition of the best sound? No, there's not. And that's why I say whatever microphone you have is the one you need and you can get the sound you want from it. And I'm gonna show you how. Using a microphone with an acoustic guitar is, I might, I might step on my tongue here or whatever, put my foot in my mouth. Using a microphone with an acoustic guitar is less about the microphone and more about where it's placed. Let that sink in for a second. You may believe me, you may not, that's okay. In my experience, whatever microphone I have, it could be a thousand dollar microphone, it could be a $10 microphone. The quality of the sound that you get really is dictated by where that microphone is placed. Now, are there differences between cheap microphones and expensive microphones? Yes, there are. I'm not denying that fact. But if you can learn how to place a microphone, you can get, it's kind of the 80-20 rule, you can get the sound that you want. Okay, so there's two elements when it comes to placing the microphone. First of all, we're gonna talk about area, where on the guitar the microphone is pointed at. And then secondly, we're gonna talk about distance, how close or how far away the microphone is. And the cool thing is, is you're going to hear all the scenarios, okay? So let's first isolate area. We're gonna break this down into four positions, okay? The first is going to be the microphone focused on the neck of the acoustic guitar, angled towards the body, but more skewed towards the neck. Next, we're gonna look at, or rather listen to, the microphone pointing at the neck body joint. And then we're gonna look at, again, or listen to, the microphone pointing at the sound hole. And then finally, we're gonna listen to the microphone pointed at the lower bout. Now, there is not an ideal position. Again, it's just what you're hearing. It's almost as if you're sitting down with a guitar and there's a semicircle kind of in front of you. That's the, the positions we're gonna go through here. You're gonna hear each and every one. I'm gonna play the same exact thing so you can hear the differences. Now, what you may notice is this. As the guitar is by the neck, or as the microphone is by the neck of the guitar, you're gonna notice that it lacks body, but it has a lot of clarity, a lot of stringiness. As the guitar swing, or as, wow, as the microphone swings to the front of the guitar, you're gonna notice more body or more bass, more roundness blending into what you hear. And that's what I want you to hear. None of these positions are the best. It's quite simply what you want to hear. So think of it as a tone knob, stringy and trebly to more bassy and more body. So again, we're gonna hear the neck, the neck body joint, the sound hole, and then the lower bout. Back to back to back, here it is. was your favorite? Was it the neck, the neck body joint, the sound hole, or the lower bout? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Now I should mention that the microphone I'm using for all of these examples from here on out, both placement and distance, which we're about to get to, is gonna be the Ear Trumpet Edwina. It's my favorite microphone. It represents the acoustic guitar best to my ears, so I wanted to use it for 
demo purposes. Okay, so we talked about placement. Now let's talk about mic distance, how close or far the microphone is. Now this is why I say you can get the sound you want with the microphone you have, because you have the freedom to place it wherever you want. You have the freedom to put it far away, pointed at the lower bout. You have the freedom to put it close, pointed at the sound hole. Whatever combination between placement and distance, you can generally get the sound that you want. So now let's again talk distance. Okay, so the closer the microphone is, generally speaking, there's more bass and there's more detail. The further away the microphone gets, the less bass and the more room that you hear, okay? It's gonna be less stringy, it's gonna be a little bit more, think of it as a, 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 a realistic painting versus an expressionism painting. Expressionistic painting, painting? You know, like a Cloud Monet when you, when you look at, at it from afar and you can see the whole scene and then you get up close and it just like looks like a bunch of dabs of paint, okay? That's what a, a far microphone will give you. Whereas a realistic painting, uh, you can see the detail up close and it's almost, it's almost just, just awesome how much detail there is. It's very similar with a microphone. So you're gonna hear four different distances here, back to back to back. Again, I'm playing the same thing all through the ear trumpet Edwina microphone. You're gonna hear a close mic position or a close mic distance, which is about four to five inches away. You're gonna hear a mid distance, which is about 12 inches away. You're gonna hear a far distance, which is two to three feet away. And then you're gonna hear a room microphone, which is gonna be about five feet or more. I think for the sake of this demo, it was about seven feet away from where I was sitting. Uh, I'll go ahead and label each one as you see the video, but I want to do these back to back to back to back so you can actually hear the differences and process them immediately. Again, one is not better than the other. It's just a buffet of options for you. Okay, let's have a listen. Yes, I have another question for you. I actually have two questions for you. Which distance was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're commenting, do you have a home recording setup? What's the microphone that you use? What's your favorite? Go ahead and uh, list that in the comments as well. Again, I love for these comment sections to serve as, as a, well, a fun place to talk, but also a resource for guitar geeks maybe wanting to get into recording and looking for some microphone options. So again, if you have a microphone at home that you like, that you use, go ahead and let me know in the comments below, below. Uh, let me know and let your fellow guitar geeks know. Okay, on to your first dose of acoustic news you can use. And the first thing comes from the electric guitar world kind of, um, the Mule Caster. I've talked about it before on the Acoustic Tuesday show. There was a comment about the Mule Caster and what makes it so special. And Matt made a video for, for everybody to clarify what actually differentiates the Mule Caster from other electric guitars, because it is much more than a simple piece of wood with a neck on it and a pickup. In fact, it's not made out of wood at all. But rather than me explain, I'll have Matt from Mule Resonator Guitars explain. Here he is clarifying what the Mule Caster actually is. So we've got a double cutaway guitar. We've seen a million of these. It's just like one of those, right? Except there's one important difference. This is made out of steel. This is a hollow steel body um, Mule Caster. What, what the top and the back are made out of is this. This is stainless steel, 22 gauge, very thin. Now why is that important? 
just a novelty so you can tell your friends that you have a steel guitar? No, this is why that is important. Okay, I'm not all about tap tone. I'm not gonna tell you that because this resonates at a certain pitch, um, everything's gonna sound better. But what that does show is that this is very efficient at transferring energy. That was just a short snippet of that video. I do encourage you to check out the full thing because Matt provides great information and along with that great information, he gives some of the, the philosophy behind the choices that they make there at Mule Resonator Guitars. Now on to the next uh, news piece. This is really less of a news piece and more of a general awareness piece. Uh, we're gonna stay in the electric guitar world I feel like I'm wading into forbidden territory here. Now, Iris Guitars posted a picture of a guitar with a sound hole pickup in it, and it caught my eye. It's a Curtis Novak acoustic gold foil sound hole pickup. It's a mouthful. And it's modeled after the original DeArmond sound hole pickups for acoustic guitar that I believe were introduced in the 1950s, pretty sure. I hope, I hope my information is correct. Anyways, um, I thought this was cool. And I think the, the common myth or the common misstep is you have to go find one of these vintage DeArmond pickups. No, new ones are being made. And it sounds like this Curtis Novak pickup is, is pretty awesome. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. It looks cool. I'm sure it sounds cool. I know I heard a, a Trey Hensley play through a similar pickup. I think it was an actual vintage DeArmond pickup. And, um, they have a distinct sound. It's a unique sound and one that uh, would be great to add to your um, sonic offerings, if you will, since we're talking about buffets and things of that nature today. Anyways, uh, let's check uh, Let's check out a guitar signal. Let's head north of the border. Yes, let's head to the Great White North. We're gonna go to Portland, Ontario, Canada, and visit Jerry Black and take a look at his guitar signal. Here's what he's got. A Taylor GS Mini, a Seagull Concert Hall Mahogany Burst, an Epiphone Les Paul Standard Plus Top Cherry Burst, an Epiphone ES339 Vintage Burst, a Gretsch Boxcar Resonator. He says the acoustics were purchased new, the electrics were both gently used and well looked after. I think I'm good for a while now, but you never know when a gas attack might occur. That is truth. Spoken from an experienced guitar geek right there. You just never know. You never know when you're going to get bit by the bug and find yourself on reverb or at your local guitar shop looking at guitars and pretty soon you waltz home with a case and you got to hide it from your significant other who knows that you got another guitar and you sheepishly walk through the front door. No, I've never done that before. That's just wow. That's how I picture it in my mind. That's how I picture it in my mind. I've never experienced that before in my life. I've never watched out the window to see if UPS has driven up so I can hide said rectangular box and uh, keep it away from Whitney. I've never done, never done that before in my life. Gosh, come on, give me a little bit more credit than that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> anyways, if you want to be like Jerry and get your guitar arsenal featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show, please do so. All you need to do that is, is in the description below. You got a link for the guitar arsenal shirt right there. Once you get that shirt, take a picture amongst all of your guitars and then submit it using the link in the description below. You can submit your picture, write a description, say howdy, how are you, give me a little bit of a story, and I'll feature you on a future episode of the show. And uh, now it's time to, speaking of guitars, grab your guitar. The, every single week, the TAC family rotates through the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Wow, I've said this so many times, I just totally stumbled over my words. <laughs> every single week within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, <laughs> The TAC family focuses on the five essential categories of guitar improvement. On Mondays, they do a technique challenge. Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. Today is Tuesday. They are working on a guitar lick, and here's the one they're working on. Rothgar is the name of your Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge. Yeah, I think I was going through a bit of a, a mythical phase when I was uh, naming this. Now this comes from, of course, the famed, uh, I guess it's a poem, an epic poem, Beowulf. And I'm actually not even sure who or what Rothgar is. I don't think it's the dragon. I don't think it's the knight. Maybe it's where they lived. I don't know. It sounds cool. It begins with an H, so I decided to name this lick Rothgar. That's besides the point. Uh, this is a bluesy lick in the key of A. Let me go ahead and play it for you, and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit and see how well you can use this in a musical context. And I think that 
If you take this lick at face value, it seems like it only has one use. However, if we zoom out, we can actually use some of the inner workings of this and apply it to many other musical situations. We'll get there in a moment, but first, here's how it sounds. So you hear that and you think to yourself, that's an ending lick. Absolutely, 100% it is an ending blues lick. Yes, it absolutely is. It functions fantastically well if you're ending a blues in the key of A. But I wanna show you this. Now, here's an interesting thing. I'm using a lot of notes that are outside the key. You know, this walk down leads to that A7. And I'm going, let's see, I'm going one, two, three frets up. Three frets up from that, I guess we'll call it the landing chord. In this case, it's an A7. Well, if I'm using fretted notes, I'm not including any open strings, that means I can move this. And I can actually move the concept. Check this out. So this is over uh, an A chord. Again, I'll play it for you. Um, But again, what about maybe doing it over a D7? Well, I'll go three frets up. One, two, three. All right, that would be really cool to incorporate into a, a, a blues in the key of A while playing over a D chord, right? I just did a little lick at the end just to bring us back to an A, but I think you get the drift is that, okay, if I wanna create some tension and I wanna lead the listener to a chord, I can use these dissonant out of scale notes, out of key notes to do that very job. Again, if you wanna do it over a, uh, an E7, you can do that too. Up three frets. One, two, uh, let's see, one, two, three. All right, it's a very common blues motif. And I think, I, I know in my case, I learned it over one chord, the A chord, and I thought, that's its only application. Well, the more and more I played, the more I started to listen to the blues, the more I heard this motif, not just in the key of A. And I thought, okay, well, I only know it in the key of A. How can that be done? Well, if you take the concept, zoom out, and start to apply it to different chords, you've got yourself a pretty useful approach to, again, leading the listener to any given chord. So, Rather than just take licks at face value, I want you to start to dig into them a little bit and kind of um, understand their inner workings. Because I think these inner workings can really open our eyes to much more larger uh, musical concepts. So uh, I hope you really dug that. I hope you enjoyed that. I've been on a major blues kick lately and I wanted to share a little bit of a, a, a nugget of that with you. Now, there's something in my notes I wanted to, to mention and it's something I had to break down. Um, I want to read this to you because I think it's very important and I want you to really internalize this. I'm going to read it verbatim how I wrote it. Frustration is bred from unclear goals and unrealistic expectations. Frustration is bred from unclear goals and unrealistic expectations. What made me think of this? Well, number one, I want to zoom out and say, Consistency is the key to your success and your progress and your fun with guitar. All too often, I see and hear guitar students try something one time, get frustrated that they can't get it, and they stop pursuing said song, said guitar lick, said rhythmic approach, but, you know, fill in the blank. It is so important to go into learning something new Understanding that the more consistently you attack that thing, the more consistently you try that thing, the more likely you are to actually get it under your fingers. As opposed to having the unrealistic expectation of trying something new one time, not getting it, and getting frustrated. If you, if you go into something thinking, I'm gonna try this once, this thing I've never done before, I'm just gonna try it one time and I'm gonna get it right off the bat, that you are setting yourself up for uh, the perfect storm of frustration. 
And furthermore, I mentioned unclear goals. You know, a lot of times throughout our guitar journey, it ebbs and flows. We learn new things, uh, we get excited, we feel like maybe we're not achieving as much progress as we want to, then we reflect back and think, okay, the progress is actually building. Unclear goals can cause this tire spinning effect where you don't feel like you're getting any better, you don't feel like you're working towards anything because your goals are unclear. That causes frustration. And ultimately that frustration builds up and it can actually cause you to stop playing regularly. So it's kind of this, this circle of guitar life. I want you to have fun, I want you to achieve progress, I want you to achieve your goals. Okay, so have clear goals. Know that consistency is your key to progress and consistency is your key to achieving those goals. And consistency also limits that frustration. Okay, so it's kind of a, a, a huge little uh, bundle here. And I wanna read that, that statement one more time. Frustration is bred from unclear goals and unrealistic expectations. So, in closing, I'll get off my soapbox. If you find yourself frustrated, with whatever you're playing, with whatever you're learning. Take a second and ask yourself why you're getting frustrated. And chances are it's because of one of those two things. Number one, you may have had unrealistic expectations going into trying to learn something new. I've done it, you've likely done it too. That's okay, awareness is half the battle. And number two, if you're frustrated, ask yourself if your goal is unclear. Because if your goal is unclear, you it's almost like you're trying to hit a moving target. It's very difficult and it can induce major moments of frustration. I know it's happened to me and again, it's probably happened to you as well. So if you get frustrated, it's bound to happen. It's not really an if, it's a when. Just zoom out, ask yourself these questions and see if you can kind of tidy things up a little bit, realign and then go forward with your consistent guitar routine. I'm gonna kick off your second dose of acoustic news you can use with a singer songwriter that blew the doors off my car. I don't know, is that a phrase? I don't know if people say that. Um, yeah, uh, as soon as I heard this individual, I was, I was captivated, I really was, from his voice to the content of his songwriting to his guitar playing, kind of a triple threat situation. Cole Chaney. And I have to, a huge tip of the hat to Western AF for finding these artists, recording them, and really kind of spreading the word about them. Uh, if you don't know about Western AF, follow them on YouTube or subscribe to them on YouTube. Follow them on Instagram. I believe they have a Patreon you can contribute to as well. If you've enjoyed their videos in the past, if you continue to enjoy them, uh, make sure to check that out. But the focus here is on Cole Chaney. Just a, uh, well, I already described him. I don't need to describe him anymore. Let's just go ahead and listen to him, right? Uh, here's his song entitled The Unsatisfied. Again, folks, Cole Chaney. Well, I can blame the stars for if I were a rocking man, I'd fly right into the sun. This pounding heart runs on drinking my blood, taking no account of the damage I've done. Settle down, child, don't you know what you've asked for in life? Uncertainty. The holidays have passed, and if you were wanting to receive an awesome music book that you could dig into for the new year and you didn't get it, don't worry. I've got an opportunity for you. Uh, I found this and I thought, man, this is right up my alley. And if you like reading about music, if you like reading about music history, this is for you as well. Uh, just announced, I'm gonna read this and then we're gonna have a look at a video. Just announced the museum has begun a partnership with Illinois Press for the publication of books about country music, as well as reissues of significant out of print historical works. The first release in this partnership is entitled Western Edge, The Roots and Reverberations of Los Angeles Country Rock, a companion to a major multi-year exhibition of the same name. This lavishly illustrated book traces the impact of the Birds, Buffalo Springfield, the Eagles, Emmylou Harris, Linda Ronstadt music, Linda Ronstadt, I just read the Instagram handle, uh, Linda Ronstadt and many, many more. Order your copy at countrymusichalloffame.org forward slash shop. Very cool. Um, 
I am a sucker for things like this. I really am. I'm a complete and utter sucker for things like this. That's kind of cool. It kind of rhymes. Anyways, maybe use that in a song. I don't know. Uh, but there was a video put out of them kind of printing this and, and, and talking about it. And I wanted to share it with you because I think this is a really cool moment. Reissues of books that uh, have been out of print and stuff that hasn't been accessible in the past will now start to come to light. Pretty awesome stuff. Here's that video. To have the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum zero in on this aspect of popular music, which came out of Los Angeles, is really heartwarming. The companion book has a lot of context that, that it provides and, and fleshes out what you, what you see in the exhibit. Linda Ronstadt has written the foreword for it. Mary Catherine Alden, um, James Austin, Allison Brown, Steve Fischel, Dave Alvin. It was a, a, a scene, it, but not a scene for people who wanted to get famous. It was a scene of people who wanted to make great music together. And on those reissued, re-released notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. Yes, but first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, huh, next week is going to be a new year. We're going to just waltz right into 2023. And a lot of folks pick up the guitar in the new year. They start their guitar journey January 1st, right at the beginning of the new year. So next week's show is going to be focused on what to avoid when you're learning the guitar. Identifying the common pitfalls that can happen when you start your guitar journey and what to do instead. I wanna help you, I wanna be your guide. I wanna, I wanna get you set up on the right path so you enjoy your guitar journey from day number one. I'm gonna give you all the ins and outs of that next week on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And before I let you go for today, please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Fun should be your top priority when you have fun that directly relates to the progress you achieve. It's a never ending cycle and I want you to enter that cycle and never leave. Welcome to your guitar journey. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek and I'll see you next Tuesday I'll see you next year on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers to you, Guitar Geeks Unite.